Oh, hello, friend. Today is a unique little game where a private military contractor staffed with clones of professional eaters with hemophilia fight an interdimensional Mayan death cult on the conquest for human flesh. Quasimorph, a turn-based survival roguelike game, vaguely reminds me of Project Overkill meets Darkwood. Normally, my eyes roll into the back of my head as roguelike survival crafting meme has been an overused buzzword in the past 15 years, rarely done well and only serves to turn games into a grindy mess that either uses poorly implemented or non-existent game mechanics as a feature. Quasimorph tends to be fair in its implementation as long as the player understands the mechanics, which there are a few, with more depth than expected. Let's start with our expendable heroes, the clones. Their stats and specialty vary greatly. Start out with a few familiar names from the demo. Using each one helps learn different aspects of the game. Francis is okay. The weapon durability helps early on, until we pick up on the crafting, trading, looting system. Percy looks good with his resist and durability. He'll be useful early in the game. Later we find out evasion and high weapon accuracy will save you later on, which Percy's sort of lacking. Fairly certain he's been changed or nerfed since the demo. He's okay as a starter melee build, but I would rather take Isabella. His defensive traits gimp his offensive capabilities for later game. Boudica is a more flexible build. Most people are going to treat the game as a run and gun at first. Melee is viable here, with her extended range can make a good hybrid exploring both of those areas of combat. Could potentially shine with extended range shotgun with a tunnel rat class. Isabella is straight out melee offensive with large increase to damage, crit, ignored infection, and the largest dodge percentage. Can get more clones unlocked through green chips that randomly found during missions, rewards, or trade. Next, pick a class. This can be changed again, resetting all skills. We start out with blades that is more melee. I prefer Haze Scout as I haven't gone balls deep into melee. You can pick up brown chips to expand classes, just like green chips for clones. The classes have very unique play styles. One I found, Tunnel Rat, is my new favorite, as it's massive crit shotgun damage and instant heals to wound with a cooldown. Shotguns wreck fairly hard, so I'm pleased. Next, we equip our guys. From my experience, one gun with two packs of ammo with some food, antibiotics always, bandages and splints until we can get med gel. Armor is optional. I highly recommend finding impact armor. It's easy to come by by fighting the civil resistance. The recent tutorial revamp has missions that drop it often. It's not the toughest against physical damage, but it has a good balance between physical and elemental resist. You'll need this to prevent being poisoned or bursting into flames or hit with an explosive barrel or laser. Finally, a backpack to fill with loot and a vest to either speed up reloads or fast click grenade. Casting off, we land on the mission. The landing area is usually safe-ish. In order to get extracted, one of four outcomes must be met. 1. Complete the mission. 2. Pick up a recipe. A ship that can be found randomly in the complex. 3. Die. 4. Rage quit. Can contact our operator to see the progress and current mission objectives. Open up the map. If there aren't any scramblers, we can use the facility sensors to map out mission objectives and enemy locations. Most areas will have multiple floors. It's a matter of luck versus resources sometimes, as these areas can be massive. If things go south, you can game the system by control alt deleting as the game auto saves from the mission start. The game mechanics is where things get interesting in unique complexity. The first thing is movement. Quasimorph is a turn-based game. One action being a turn. There are three movement stages, sneak, one action, hopefully catching enemies while they sleep, standard walk, two actions, sprint, three actions, but can't use items, weapons, or doors. Next is vision. By right-clicking the mouse, the character can turn. The red marks will appear from hearing or sensing something nearby. If your character can't actively see them, then they're blanked out by the fog. There are low light areas that affect this further. This is the time I hope you chose your class and load out wisely, as all abilities are passive or passively activated under certain conditions. These come at the expense of calories. You have no control over their activation on top of every time the character moves also burns calories. This means the character will be constantly looting enemies for foodstuffs to stuff their face, or else they'll starve to death. When food is unavailable, 
you can eat the flesh of your enemies or cut their limbs off and use them as weapons. The weapons feel pretty meaty. Even basic firepower can shoot up covers, doors, and walls. Reloads do take turns. In the case of a pump action, it's one round per load. They even have alt fire modes to conserve ammo. Why I prefer the Taiga shotgun as its straight magazine reload. This is where the game turns into doom, turning areas into bloody blown out messes. There are hordes of enemies to mow down from scientists to station techs to security guards and robots. To the game's namesake, the Quasimorphs. This is where things start going crazy. Missions outside of the safe plants like Mars can summon these creatures. Every step taken increases the gauge. After 100, an enemy killed has a chance to spawn them out of a corpse, with a limited invul period. Depending on the stage, stronger variants can appear. When the gauge hits 1,000, the area will be hell on earth with respawning waves of creatures that want to eat your tasty man flesh. The kicker of all, most likely have to kill a mini boss to leave now. Thankfully, preparation can avoid missions from turning into disaster. Cigarettes, vodka, beer, morphine, all the keno things in life reduce the gauge of growth. Not only is a character binge eating, but checking the pockets of everyone they come across for the sweet taste of tobacco. If you get hit, there's a chance of a bone breaking, blood loss, infection. And they aren't great to have by themselves, but getting all of them without supplies or the enemy crits on you just right is a near death sentence. Currently the ship can make infinite sorbent. That reduces the poison and infection rates. Banded splints fix bleeds and breaks. They can be crafted or looted easy enough. In a pinch, rags can be used by breaking down enemies' clothes to stop the bleeding as well. The clever yet insidious bit is they can cause infection as they're not sterile. Projectiles have the chance to pass through enemies hitting or stunning those behind. Certain enemies have higher resist to damage types. There's a variety of ammo types to counter that. Incendiary rounds, flechette, poison, flamethrowers, nail guns, lasers that are just massive Kamehameha waves of deletion that also cause burning. We got mines, grenades, flashy, explodey, fiery. Flashbangs are surprisingly effective at stunning rooms. Using incendiaries feels like committing a war crime. I really like the smart turrets. They're crucial on defense missions with the projectile and laser versions. Missions tend to be a tad long though. With death an instant possibility at any time, you gotta pace yourself. Sometimes opening that convenient place door isn't ideal. Instead, blow a hole to the side and enter. A good amount of times, death is from a lack of situational awareness or not knowing my limitations. Example, I got knocked back by a shotgun blast. The knock sent me off a platform into steamy hot magma. The worst is I got surrounded by poisonous spiders. Had to walk through some of them to actually get out of the room. Got poisoned. Used anti-venom. Poison gone. 30 seconds later it comes back to instantly kill me for reasons. This can happen with other wounds too. Now I can see a wound bleeding again. But poison coming back after the anti-venom cleared the visible poison counters is a bit much. Add-on wounds tend to reopen too often. They really like to do it when you're low on supplies. I had a wound reopen about five times in a row in the same hallway. It's a tad excessive. Missions appear randomly throughout the solar system. The ship takes time to travel, so it's advised to note how much longer the mission is available versus the time it takes to travel. There are a wide variety of factions that gain power over time. You can subscribe to them and get updates on their new missions. What I like here is the player can help grow or collapse these groups through missions. This leads to outposts being closed off or out of order from damage or faction hit. Mission types range from elimination, espionage, defense. Sussing out their difficulty can be difficult at first, and even just as difficult when you think you have it. The game's difficulty is supposed to increase over time. The missions start out about sub 500, or relatively easy. The ones closer above 1000 are pretty hard to extremely long. Crafting is fairly straightforward. Start out with a decent amount of recipes unlocked with more gained from chips. Everything from weapons, ammo, armor, med supplies. They usually require around two to three components. Crafting can be done in the overworld or missions. First on board the ship has three slots, starting with free replication of the sorbent to cure infection and poison, and you will need this. Others come in mid-mission crafting tables. Just about everything can be freely broken down into base components. If I need an armor repair kit, I can break down some sneakers for rubber, uniforms for cloth, armor plates. There comes a bit of progression here as the starting medical supplies are bandages. 
for bleeds, splints, for broken bones. Eventually, med gel can be acquired doing the job of both, saving us one inventory space. Might not seem like much, but one inventory slot is a world of difference in this game. Trading is another way to get items outside of mission rewards in crafting. Every facility belongs to a faction with their own rewards and want. We can see the percentage of items received in a menu, I often find myself getting the same tech chips over again. Thankfully, they and the vast majority of items have purpose either for initial use or components. Sometimes results in a hilarious trade such as bottled water for a horde of laser rifles. Brief critique on the system requires deploying to the station, finding the trade terminal on the station that has a map resets every visit. It would be easier just to trade from the station from orbit, cutting down on the tedium. When landing, you can see on the map, and if you head in that direction, the trade terminal will be there every time. Having a fog recover a static neutral area seems rather pointless. Could I recommend Quasimorph? TLDR? Yes. There's a major content patch announced adding to everything from story missions to ship upgrades, economy aspects of combat overhaul. Devs are working very fast to implement content. It's barely been three months since release. The basis of risk versus reward are there. Should I eat this enemy to keep up my calories? Doing this will increase the quasi-morph meter. Do I drink the beer to decrease the quasi-morph meter that will cause me to be intoxicated, tanks my accuracy, increases my infection rate? Do I break this gun to fix the one I have ammo for? It's oddly addicting game. They do need to tidy up the negative status modifiers stacking after being healed. It's one of the most annoying bugs I've noticed. Let's start with a bit of history of the game to this point. I started playing the prequel The Awakening a few months before release. It serves as a demo with a narrative that leads to the events of the main game. Instantly addicted. The turn-based run and gun with some pretty good pixel graphics was a chef's kiss. The balance of risk versus reward was just right. Getting gear chips would have them replicate the gear for free, giving a sense of progression. Ending the game with a legend armor and a chain gun, going full doom guy and marking the end boss. The game was delayed from summer to October to add some features. Problems came on release and it was a bit of a shit show. The game went from negative to mixed reviews for how the new systems were implemented over the demo. First, the tutorial had a bunch of decent gear, had to load up on it for an ideal starting position. Most noticeably was the gear recipes no longer being self-replicating for weapons and armor as it was now part of a crafting system. The character deaths became far more punishing without replicated base gear, making it optimal to grind the broken trade system to re-equip. They patched in 24 hours of launch and insurance package that gave starter gear. Though I find it odd a PMC wouldn't have on hand as a base equipment for its operators. The problem that missions no longer had such large amount of loot or items to break down. On top of that, the mid-mission crafting tables were fairly rare. Then we had gear breaking super fast, leading to re-equipping loot nearly every room. The mission difficulty length was all over the place. Resist types were broken, resulting in enemies needed to be mag dumped or require certain weapon variations that wasn't readily on hand. The robot being the worst defender. After that, the trade was super broke. There was a trade trifecta from Mars, Moon, and Earth where the ship could make infinite morphine, getting an infinite laser, weapons, massive amounts of chips. The introduction of champion type enemies such as the flamethrower, disc thrower, laser guys. The laser guys could nearly always get first shot resulting in an extremely high instant death. The problem with fire moved over from the demo, so there was no way to extinguish it. Getting caught on fire was an instant death. Until recently, now you can dunk Pepsi on your third degree burns. And it really wasn't until fairly recently you could even extinguish fire at all, and all they did was replace it with poison spam. This forces a player to shoot through walls or burn bodies or very strategically try to kill the enemies from the doors. And even with antibiotics, the poison has the ability to linger for extra ticks or just deal insane instant damage. Overall, the game has come back to the near balance the demo had. Craft tables, food, materials are plentiful. Gear doesn't break as fast. The one-shot champions got toned down a tad. Trading got rebalanced slightly. The game feels a bit more like the demo that drew me in. And they were able to accomplish this within two months of launch, which is fairly impressive for most indie games. When it comes to a recommendation, the game is under $20 without a sale. It's back to being positive reviews due to constant well-received updates. They even added ovens for potential stronger food crafting. I'd say it's worth it right now, but be aware the game is still under construction with progress wipes every major update. This is definitely a game worth supporting based on the progress so far.